I want to clarify. I was bawling Friday when this news came down, like literally crying in my house. I'm personally freaking out. I'm disturbed. I'm upset about it. And I just want everybody to get on my level. Like that's, that's where I think this story's at. Okay. So for those who don't know, a quick refresher, Julian Assange, this is uh, something that's been going on for about almost a decade now, right? Like this is an ongoing saga. And a lot of people have um, either don't know what's going on or they don't really understand what's going on or they have misinformation that makes them think he's a bad guy, right? Um, And so here's a quick summary. Basically, Julian Assange is a journalist. He is, in my opinion, one of the only current journalists in operation that is still doing the job that a journalist is supposed to do, which is actually investigating telling people what's happening. Well, what about CNN and MSNBC? (laughs) Propaganda. They don't do (laughs) crap. Um, I actually was listening to the New York Times this morning. I listen to their podcast most days just to hear what the left's saying. And they have this like whole episode right now, basically excusing away their promotion of the Steele dossier. They have to admit it's like fraud now. And I'm like, no, no, this like, it's been fraud. We've known that these, these outlets are junk. Julian Assange is a real one. Okay. And he had this company WikiLeaks and Um, Back when Obama was president, you had Chelsea Manning, who was a whistleblower. She was in the military. She became really disturbed at what she was seeing overseas and basically was finding out about war crimes that we were committing. Human rights violations, like broke actual ethical codes that we've established across the globe in first world countries, things we don't do. And she took the information to a journalist. And they basically published it through WikiLeaks. And this was a huge deal. And this was um, really embarrassing to both political major parties. It revealed actual war crimes. I can't I can't overemphasize this enough. Like we were murdering innocent civilians, journalists. They have video footage of it. Like I will never horrible. forget that one video that shows them killing the innocent people and mis- by mistake. I will never forget that video. And Hannah, right? All the information was true, correct? It wasn't any of it wasn't false or anything. Not one bit. And that's why, right? If you have a real whistleblower, and I want to be clear, because you can tell a real whistleblower from like a fake, like the Facebook whistleblower, like you're not a real whistleblower if they're like patting you on the head and bringing you in to give testimony. You're a real whistleblower when both parties want you dead because you reveal the truth about what they're doing. And that's what happened to Julian Assange. So the U.S. has been after him ever since. Republicans and Democrats, they've been trying to get their hands on him. They've been trying to extradite him. He was in the UK when some of this started going down and basically the Ecuadorian embassy gave him refuge. And so he lived inside this embassy in house arrest for seven years. Um, They're still after him. They tried to go through other countries to get their hands on him. There were some trumped up charges from Sweden, I believed, over sexual assault, which he's always said was just a pretense, basically, to try to have him extradited there so that they could hand him over to the U.S. Those charges were later dropped. They weren't substantial. There was nothing backing them up. Um, And then he basically got into like a kind of fight with Ecuadorian embassy. I want to be clear from everything I've read. I don't think Julian Assange is the most likable guy. I don't think he's super warm and fuzzy. He gets kicked out of the embassy. Um, And that then makes him vulnerable, right? So then he's vulnerable to all these governments that are after him. And um, the UK swiftly arrest him, basically for skipping bail on the charges from Sweden that have been dropped anyways. Um, And he's been in prison there ever since. So he's been literally a political prisoner for the past couple of years. And the US has still been after him. And what happened that's such a big deal is on Friday last week, the US has been appealing a decision by the UK courts to have him extradited. And basically the UK um, determined that it would extradite him to the u.s so unless something changes he is heading over But the home secretary the home secretary in the uk still has to sign off do you know if they will or won't it's anybody's guess i don't know as much about the uk court systems or or the person in charge there so it's it's been up in there it's been a it's been a football right it's been back and forth they said they wouldn't extradite him now they are saying they will so i mean to me it's kind of mayday because we don't know what's going to happen but what we do know is if he get if he comes over here he's going to face espionage charges um, because they try to like, basically push, push this narrative of like, oh, he stole state secrets and endangered the U.S. and, and hurt national security. It's like, no, he didn't. There was no national security implications. And number two, you know what? I don't care. Even if there had been national security implications, I want to know what my government's doing. I want to know when they're pushing war crimes on people. I think that that is a thing that is necessary under freedom, right? Like that is more important. Freedom of the press, free speech, the ability to know what our government's doing, transparency, accountability. That's the top concern. And then comes national security. That's how this precedent should go. Liberty first, basic human rights first, and then we'll worry about these things. But even if you do, you know, care about this more and your, your priorities are flipped, 
there is nothing to indicate that what he did actually ever put us in jeopardy. Um, and most people on the left were kind of in his camp, at least like the old dog, like blue dog, traditional Democrats were in his camp up until 2016 when this man, while he's in the Ecuadorian embassy, while he's being hunted by governments across the world, doesn't care that he doesn't care. You're not taking him down. He leaks all these DNC emails, basically showing that the DNC conspired to ensure that Hillary Clinton was the nominee and not Bernie Sanders. So that now the left right. hates him, and you'll hear very few people in mainstream media standing up for him, even though this is like one of the most significant tests of the First Amendment and freedom of the press we've ever seen in this country. Um, they they're still not coming to his defense, and I just I don't think people understand how serious this is, and like <clears throat> how much this really could have a major impact on our ability to have real journalists rise up and give us actual information that we need. Yeah, I think it's super interesting that you bring up the po the press point because I went back and I read Washington Post and New York Times editorials defending him and his press freedoms and making this a First Amendment thing. But if I recall correctly, those were dated before 2016. Uh, and there are some mainstream press figures who still defend him, but it's certainly not what you would expect given the gravity of the situation. Um, and so that's concerning to me because, unfortunately, one of the biggest enemies of the free press today and the First Amendment and all these things that we take for granted, one of the biggest threats to the free press today, ironically enough, is actually mainstream journalists. I mean, they now clamor for more censorship and call on tech companies to crack down on their competitors. One of the biggest cheerleaders, for goodness sake, of the people uh, clamoring to have the New York Post's basically true story about Hunter Biden's laptop uh, censored on online before the election in 2020 was journalists at mainstream outlets. And it's the same reason why you don't see many of them sticking up for people like Julian Assange. It's that they're very short-sighted and they really don't stand up for these values and these principles. I've even written about uh, defending the free press in examples where I think they're horrible or wrong or liberal bias or anything, because that is my principle and I will stick to it. But so many people in the mainstream media really don't actually care about freedom of the press. They just want the press censorship to go their way. And that is such a dangerous game. One thing, though, I want to ask you about is like, what is the uh, charges specifically against Assange? And, and people say that he endangered national security or anything like I kind of am sympathetic to your argument that even if he did, if he was revealing true war crimes, OK, I mean, I, I won't value safety over liberty because that's a very problematic thing. However, though, did he even do that? Is it like when you look into the details or is that just kind of what they what they paper on so they can crack down on somebody who made them look exposed to them? Yeah, they're trumped up charges for sure. They're trying to try him for like treason and under the espionage kind of crimes, which I think is really over exaggerated. If they do get him here and he has a trial, quote, quote, I mean, why would we ever think it would be a fair trial first and foremost? But he faces life in prison basically here in the U.S. Um, so for what he did, like I, I don't think that it rises that level, but basically Chelsea Manning was a whistleblower and I believe that he did help her crack a system and like get into it. So that's what they're kind of trying to hang their hat on essentially. So, I mean, again, I honestly just don't care if I'm being completely transparent. I don't care. I think freedom of the press is more important. And I think this is exactly what journalists should be doing. Um, and what I what I fear is, is not only is this persecution of a journalist, which we see in other countries worldwide, it's important to know, like the press is we take it for granted. Threat. Oh, my gosh. Even in like the UK, they, other countries don't have our First Amendment laws, right? They do not have these kinds of protections whatsoever. We see journalists who are regularly killed persecuted, abused, tortured. This Being a journalist is actually a very risky job. Um, and I think that if you're doing it right, which I think you and I both aspire to, you're going to make a lot of enemies because you represent the actual people and the truth and you're not you know, beholden to certain power. So nobody's standing there in the gap for you when the power comes after you. You have no friends, you have no tribe, you have no base. Um, and so what he's doing is, is so essential. I, I wrote this article at Fee about it, but like if you look at our founding, our founders knew how important freedom of the press is. We cannot have true liberty, a true functioning republic, if the people don't have an actual free press bringing them the truth so that they can hold their government accountable. And we increasingly do not have that. I can probably name on one hand the journalists who I think are still doing their job and actually bringing this kind of information to people. And what this is meant to do is to scare anybody else away from actually participating in the field of journalism right. like Assange has. Well, and it will work. I was going to say that the thing that's most concerning to me about this entire Julian Assange case is not just one individual, because 
no matter how compelling the case, one individual is just one individual's case. He should not go to jail for prison. That's nuts. Uh, for to to prison for life. That is nuts. But he's just one dude. I'm more concerned about like what about all the future atrocities our government may commit using our tax dollars that we'll never find out about because of the chilling effect that this has. Like if I was a journalist and somebody contacted me looking to expose U.S. war crimes, I don't really work on that kind of stuff, but say that they did, I'd be worried that I'm going to get locked up and thrown in a cell for the rest of my life. And that would stop me from, you know, showing people something they have the right to know as the public. Uh, and that's what, meanwhile, right, the... I, this just brings back this memory for me. I went to a journalism conference a year or two ago, and a couple of my friends listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about, but I won't name names. And a bunch of the mainstream journalists there were talking about how they had PTSD and trauma from covering Trump while he was mean to them. And I was like, goodness gracious, people. There are actually journalists who cover war zones and get PTSD, but you being a snowflake because Trump called you fake news to your face, which... Look, I, I, I condemned a lot of his rhetoric about the press. I thought it was harsh and unfair and counterproductive, but it's like they're so snowflakey about it. It's actually a disservice to real journalists that put their lives on the line like Assange. So I just think this whole thing shows us how messed up our press is. Um, 